Welcome to Heroes Next Door. Thank you all for watching. Today on Station Rigs, we're going to be taking a look at an apparatus from Lafayette Fire Company in Pennsylvania. We're going to be meeting up with their chief, who's going to walk us around, right? Yes. All right, nice to meet you. How are you doing? Dave Keens, fire chief. All right, thank you for inviting us out. Uh, we did a station our station cribs a while ago, but we saw these trucks, the beautiful orange trucks that you got here. Can you tell us a little bit about the truck, first of all? Sure. It's a 95-foot mid-mount aerial uh, built by Pierce Manufacturing. Uh, it's a 2007 model, uh, Pierce Quantum. Okay. The unique thing that uh, is with these trucks is that it's not, not, it's not the traditional fire red. What made you go with the orange? Well, when we ordered our first fire truck back in 1949, we ordered it as red and it arrived orange. So we kept the color scheme orange ever since that. So I love the orange color. It's definitely unique. Uh, the orange, the blue, everything like that. Can I open it up and take a look? Sure may. Oh, check that out. I love how that comes out. Did I ever get you when you try to get in? No. <laughs> All right, so up here, can you tell me what you have? Sure, you're in the driver operator seat at the moment. Uh, this basically has the command system of the truck, and uh, this is where you're driving and controlling all, all of the system components that the ladder truck has. Okay, so our lights and sirens are up top, right? That's correct, and all your scene lighting is up top. Okay. And then on your lower, lower part is uh, basically where your right hand is, is your aerial control. Okay. And then you have your command screen, which uh, basically gives you your status of the truck. And then all the rest of the components are your basic windshield wipers, headlights, uh, fuel gauges, that kind of thing. Okay, I noticed there's no key for a fire truck like this. How does uh, it, how do you start it up? Uh, no, basically what we have here is we have a master power switch. Okay. And then we have an ignition on and then a starter right above that. Okay, that's pretty cool. And it's a push button drive, uh, but with air brakes. Do you need a CDL to drive a truck like this? Uh, you do not. Okay. Uh, and you got headsets. Why do you have headsets? Uh, so we can talk to each other. Uh, <clears throat> we can actually key up and talk to county radio okay. uh, if we press a button, but other than that, we're live mic. Uh, we can talk to each other while we're responding to the call and we don't have interference from lights and from the sirens and the air horns. Right, and also protect your hearing. I've been doing this for almost 29 years now, so my left side of my face <laughs> or my hearing is definitely, I have a 2% loss, so having an earmuff would have been a really good thing for me to have way back then. So this is absolutely nice. I love the fact that I can see right up the front too. It's very easy to fit in here. I got plenty of room to put my bunker gear on if I am. Some engineers don't necessarily wear it to the scene, but they'll wear their pants. Dude, this is nice. And one of the things about the Quantum Cab is that it's a very roomy piece of apparatus. You saw the steps that came down when you had to climb up and, and that's because the Quantum Cab actually sits on top of the frame rather than down in the frame. So you're actually sitting a lot higher and it is the roomiest cab that, that Pierce offers. Right, right. This is awesome. All right, so behind us is where the firefighters go in. Now, do I have to push that up or just close no, the door? No, close the door, it will go up by itself. Check that out. That's pretty slick. All right, back here. I and watch yourself because a step will come step down in the back too. Step for this one too, okay. So we have six riding positions in the, on the ladder truck here. Uh, the officer and driver are in the front, of course, and then we have four firefighter positions in the back. Each of the positions in the back, are, we have seat assignments. Uh, the seat assignments, in case they were to forget, if you look up on the ceiling, we actually have placard cards nice. that, that remind you of what your job is when you get on the scene. Okay, and you have integrated seats that put the air packs right inside. Yes. Some of the new pierces and stuff, they're going clean cab concepts. Have you ever thought about doing that? That's a, that's a relatively new concept. And uh, when this unit was built, it wasn't even a thing. It okay. wasn't even a thing to be talked about back then. Right. Just like recruitment and retention. You know, 20 years ago, it wasn't even a vo in the vocabulary. Right. But nowadays, clean cab seems to be uh, up and coming. But no, we did not consider it when when, uh, when we built this apparatus. Right, right. Looks like you got a first in bag. You got each of your air packs. Um, do you get assigned a face piece or how does that work for your truck? Firefighters get assigned a face piece. We do, do have extra face pieces in the cab in for firefighters who are not assigned one. Okay. So we carry two extras in the cab here. Okay. Basically, we're split up into an inside team and an outside team. So if you're sitting on this side of the unit, you're the outside team. If you're on the other side behind the officer, you're the inside team. So when you're on the outside team, your job is to basically set up the truck. That means get out the outrigger pads. Your job is to throw the ladder to the building, anything that's on the outside. When you're on the inside,
certified team, your job is to take the thermal imaging camera, you take your tools, and you follow the officer and you go interior for search and rescue. That's awesome. This is the truck that I would want to be on. I like that search and rescue aspect of it. So as we work our way back here, it's a mid-mount, right? It how, is. How uh, tall is this? Well, this is a 95-foot mid-mount aerial um, with a, a bucket platform on the end of it. Uh, basically, we have the ladder that drops down here. Um, <clears throat> that's how we get up. This is the, called the pedestal, and this is where we have pretty much what we call a spotter who keeps a, a line of sight on the people who are actually operating in the bucket. Okay. The people who operate the bucket, they actually climb up the back. Once they have come out and set the outrigger pads, then they will climb into the bucket from the back. The spotter guy will, will climb here and then we are in operation. Okay. So this is not a door, this is the outrigger this that comes out. This is the outrigger that comes out and it drops down. We have these pads which we have to put out first okay. for stabilization. Okay. And about how far do those come out? Uh, the outriggers, the, the total spread, it's nine foot on each side. The total spread is, is, is 18 feet. Now, how does that fit in a, in a narrow street? Do you have to have them all the way out? Is there adjustability for that? Well, there is there is a, such a thing as called short jacking. And short jacking basically is the side that you're operating off of. You want to have as much extension as possible. And on the opposite side where you won't be able to operate, then you, you can short jack. Okay. So there's all kinds of safety features that are built in that will not allow you to actually fly in an unsafe condition. Okay. Such as it will not allow us to come past the cab because we don't want to smash the truck. Okay. And uh, it will not let us come low enough that we're going to take out any of the lights, that kind of thing. So there's a lot of safety factors that are built into this. Okay. All right, what's in this cabinet here? This this compartment here is basically our, our power cabinet where we have our breakers. This is basically for the for the truck itself, the breakers that run the lights and all the electrical systems. And we have a water can, we have a lockout tag out kit and two cord reels. So if we need to have an electrical adapter, this is where we're coming. Or if we need to have an extension onto our, uh, for, we grab a cord reel. Okay. And lockout tag out is basically getting locks open, open the elevators, open the different yes, doors. Yes, whenever, kind of whenever we want to control the power, we'll lock it out. It's for an elevator call, oh, yeah. you know, or it even could be a residential if okay. we have to lock out a, uh, <clears throat> a breaker box. Right. The next cabinet here, this is a driver's compartment basically. So we do have a, a five inch waterway, which supplies the aerial. Okay. Uh, the tip on the end is actually a 2000 gallon per minute monitor on the end for, for uh, spraying water. Okay. And does it carry water on this truck? No, no water on this so truck. It's dry. It's okay. just a dry truck. Yes. Okay. Strictly truck company. You have the driver's air pack, the driver's flashlight, the driver's radio is in here. This is just a bucket of salt because we're in the cold water, <laughs> cold winter months right now. But yeah. well, that'll come out in the summertime. But then we have this uh, adapter system here, and we just ran into this two weeks ago, where the five inch was already tied up supplying another unit, so we needed to get three inch supply. So we used the adapter, so we were able to supply the truck. Right. So you would have to have a pump uh, in order to, to run this truck. We need a pumper to run with this truck in order to flow water. Okay. Yes. Okay. Over here, I guess next compartment. Cabinet. This has a few cones in it and uh, 400 foot of search rope. Okay. So the 400 foot, it's, 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 it exceeds, most of the rope we carry are 200 foot length. This one is a 400 foot length and that is for large area searches. Right, right. And being a truck company, that's one of the primary responsibilities is to do those kind of searches. Yes, search so. and rescue is a truck company function. Right. Our next compartment, this will be our rope compartment. <clears throat> So as we look in here, this is where we have all our rope bags. Okay. This is a rigging kit. Um, basically has all of our pulleys, all of our, our uh, extra per six yep. thing, anything that we need for, for rope. And then we have, of course, bags of rope here. We have, uh, I think, it's six bags of rope, 200 foot each, all different colors right. uh, for, for managing anything that would be rope rescue. And it looks like you have your corner protectors and everything. So. Yes, corner yes. protectors on this side and, and roll, rollers, basically, yep. on this side. So are you considered high angle rescue? Or are you just more of a low angle rescue? More of a low angle rescue, but we can do high angle rescue. Okay. What are these little compartments here? Is that these, your fuel? This actually carries uh, extra SCBA, Okay. extra cylinders for our our, our SCBA, uh, self-contained breathing apparatus. What are you guys we're, running, Scotts? Uh, we're running MSA. MSA. MSA, yes. And then there's, there's one extra cylinder for each air pack that's on the truck. Okay. And then of course, this is the fuel compartment. Gotcha. This is the other outrigger, right? So you yes. got one big ones up back or up front and these ones in the back. There are four. They both come out 18 feet. I mean, 18 foot spread side to side. Okay. So there are four H style outriggers. 
This is our water rescue compartment. So we have uh, basically what we call PFDs or, or uh, personal flotation devices. That's, yeah, that's life your jackets. life jacket. Yeah. And then we have a, a, a ring here. We have some helmets uh, for our water rescuers, some throw bags. And then these are these are the harnesses for when we do do uh, rope, rope evolutions okay. if we were to need to repel. Okay, so type three harnesses. Um, do you have a lot of water in your area? We do run water rescues okay. pretty frequently, actually. What's the water way that runs through this area? Uh, well, we have the Little Conestoga Creek. Okay. And uh, we also have local flooding that occurs when it rains. Right. Uh, this compartment here is basically has some fans in it. Now, these are our electric fans where we need to plug them into our generator. We need to run our cord reels. We don't use these as much as we used to. Okay. We are now more of a battery-operated fan, which we'll see when we get to the other okay. side. Okay. Uh, those are our go-tos now are the battery-operated fans, but if you're in a a large area building or a hotel and you need more more power sure. for, for ventilation then we'll, we'll get these fans out in conjunction with the battery and operator. as I was driving up here we went past the outlets here and those are some of the larger buildings that you might have to use that and, and get that funnel going correct okay our last compartment here which is closest to the, the aerial bucket actually is our saw compartment okay. so we're running three 20 inch uh, chainsaws and two rotary saws on this side rotary vent saws so the way this is designed is that when the guys are going to the roof if we do have a working fire and we need to do some roof work okay they can get the saws out and hand them right up here those hooks on the side of the bucket they will flip out and they hang the saws right on there nice okay so what kind of coverage area do you have are you mostly residential are you mostly commercial it's a mix our infrastructure like I, what i said said earlier with the strip okay where we have the the dutch wonderland the amusement park we have hotels we have the the shopping outlets which the the tanger outlets we have residential we have industrial park. We have a railway wow. that runs through the, the area. Yes, okay. and then we actually run right up to uh, Broad Street in the city of Lancaster, and that's a career department there. So we okay. do we do border and we do work with the career department uh, pretty frequently, actually. And, but you're all volunteers, is that correct? Yes, we are all volunteers. If I wanted a volunteer, how would I get a hold of you to do that? Um, you go to our website is the easiest thing. Okay. We are here every Monday night, okay. but either at a meeting or we're doing equipment checks or we're doing training every Monday night we are here but you can just go to our website www.lafayettefire.com and you can select on the side there's a sidebar that comes up and it says join our team and it, it will give you all the information there that's pretty cool and back here I I'm... have a small compartment here and basically this has the fuel the fuel and okay. some maintenance items in for the saws in case we need to change a chain or change a blade on the fly right um, or re refuel okay I like that you have the light too that it can come off it's not just a um, extendable you can actually set that out and yes and exactly. give yourself some scene lighting two tripod lights so we can take interior once again we have to uh, um, run a cord reel to get that get the power to it right I can tell you with technology on the new engine uh, we're actually running a portable Milwaukee okay you know yeah so Ooh. this truck here is is uh, is just about reaching its life expectancy for us this is a 2007 okay so we're on a 20-year replacement plan so we're actually specking out and trying to plan a new a new truck right now okay um, this is our ladder compartment or ladder tunnel uh, we have a about 250 foot of ground ladders uh, around, and uh, this is where we also keep some of our our, uh, our hooks in here yep. um, for when we need to do ventilation or we need to do drywall work or you know a uh, hook is a fireman's tool. And it looks like there's a small compartment here. This small compartment here, this actually has the controls for the outriggers. So okay. This is, on, this is on a corded base. So once you're in the in the cab and you energize the aerial, you basically put the on switch here, and then you run your outriggers out, up, down whatever okay. you need to do. Uh, the, the truck needs to be stable and it needs to be level in order to uh, in So order this, to is, fly. this is your level then? Yes, there's, okay. a, there's a level here for this way and there's actually another level over oh, here okay. on the side for the opposite direction. Right, right. And then with that cord long enough, you can actually step over to the side and see where that outrigger yes. is coming down. And there's also an auto level button on there. Basically, you hold that for three seconds, it's a level assist. Okay. Uh, how long is this truck all together? It's, you... it's 46 feet. And a few inches. Do you have any problem getting down streets with a truck this large? No. Most that you got to watch out for is this is what we call the tail swing. Okay. So the tail swing is basically from the line at the rear axle to the end, and that's 16 feet. Okay. So when you're turning some corners, okay, 
it does swing out into the uh, side, into the lane beside you. Okay. So if there are parked cars there, um, you need to watch out for that. So those are the typical tags you see on the back of uh, 18 wheelers that says this is takes wide turns. Yes. That's what that's for. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, this compartment here, these once again, this has two fans in. These are two battery powered fans. These are our go tos. On the upper shelf, we have uh, uh, two sets of Milwaukee tools in the in the back. That that'd be like sawzall, drill, impact wrench. That's all in there plus all the attachments that would go, the impact sockets, the drill bits, the screw drive, screw gun. Sure. In the back of this, we have squeegees, brooms, anything that we would need for a, uh, a water cleanup incident. Okay. Um, so is this a pass-through to the other side? It is not. Okay. It is not it's a just a deeper. It's just a deeper compartment. Okay. And then we have, uh, this, this saw here is a little bit different. This is more of a forcible entry saw. So this has an abrasive blade on it for cutting metal okay. rather than the other saws which are cutting for made for cutting wood and shingles and and just whatever else you run into right. on a roof so this is a diamond blade on this basically made for cutting steel okay so that's that you have them all preset and ready to go you don't have to switch the blade you get right. there and figure out what you have and now you got to spend time switching that you have the saws ready to go correct this is our this compartment we have our uh, vacuums to uh two small wet vacs uh, in case we have a water related incident we need to clean up with a uh, salvage tools this is for uh, if we need to after after incident action where we need to board up or we need to put plastic over over a, a, a hole in the roof or, or cover up a window and then we have a little bit of oil dry on here in case we were run across a vehicle accident in our travels and that does happen yeah here we have a portable Honda generator which is this is really nice for when we pull up on the scene and we need lighting around the back in a timely fashion we grab that generator and get the lighting around the back. We have a little giant here, 13 foot. There's a little giant up there in these compartments. Okay. There was a compartment on each one, each side of the aerial. The one on the other side has a stokes basket and a backboard in it. This one here on this side has some salvage tubs. Those are um, stainless steel galvanized tubs for, for uh, cleaning up burned material. Okay. It also has some shovels in here and uh, another little giant ladder, but that one will be a 17 foot up there. Yeah. Um, some. Uh, <clears throat> some up. Forceful tools. entry tools here, okay. a little bit different stature. Uh, these are for breaking the, the round locks. If you ever see the, on the roll-up door, they come with oh, yeah, round yeah. locks. Okay. These large pipe wrenches, you can put them on there and you can break those right. off. On this side, we have a fast board. A fast board is used for a firefighter rescue. Yeah. So let's say a, a downed firefighter in, a, in an incident, we take this fast board and we can strap them in there, roll them in into the fast board, and it, it's a, a way for us to evacuate the uh, downed firefighter we just from started. We're looking at these. Uh, Fast Rescue Solutions actually became one of our sponsors and uh, they sent us one of these boards. We did a uh, recent review video of it. They now come with lights. Did you know that? Yes, I did. Yeah, these. these if fantastic piece of equipment it's going to save a lot of lives i'm glad you guys have that on there we were probably one of the first to have one of the fast boards we've done a lot of training with it and fortunately we've never had to use it okay, okay. Well, that's a good thing we want to be ready but you don't want to use it <laughs> this department here this is uh full of our salvage covers now salvage covers are just basically large tarps okay we have large tarps we have small tarps this is what we throw over the furniture when we want to protect it from water damage from fire damage so there's an incident where the fire's on the second floor and there's a lot of debris or water coming down through the seat. We'll throw the tarps over there really quick or we'll cover the floor so we don't track a lot of stuff around on it. Uh, when we have a, a chimney fire, that's say. We'll put the tarp out in front of the fireplace in order to keep the debris on the tarp and not really ruin the residence. Uh, so as volunteer firemen, you're not just tearing things apart and just you know putting wet stuff on the red stuff. You're really taking it above and beyond and making sure that the customer that had this major thing happen to them, that you're trying to care for them as much as possible. That's it's not correct. just about putting the fire out and just destroying everything. You're protecting their equipment and protecting their, their home. Yes. So, thank you for doing that. The next compartment, this is going to um, contain more cord reels. We have a tripod here for when we need to go below grade. So when I talk about below grade, that's going to be uh, like uh, somebody gets trapped or it has an issue, then they're down in a manhole below street level. Okay. Okay. Now we have the tripod here uh, that we can set up because we have to have a way to evacuate them from, from beneath the surface. Right. So we hook up all of our uh, rope rigging, I'll call it, okay. and our rescue equipment to that. We hook that all to the tripod. It just basically makes a TP form over the hole and we can hoist or pull that person 
person out through there. And we have used that. We had uh, residential uh, realtors that were looking at an old house and they actually went through the floor Ooh. into an old cistern. Okay. And we had to uh, to use that to get them out. Yeah, yeah. It's, an it's another thing that you don't necessarily think that has to be on a fire truck or on a rescue. You think that's heavy rescue. I don't need that kind of stuff. But the fact that you guys decided, you know what? This is going to kind of be a jack of all trades. Any kind of rescue that I can think of, we're going to have at least some piece of apparatus equipment to put on this truck to take care of that. We tried to fulfill out our rope rescue yeah. requirement. Yeah, that's very forward thinking. This is just a tray full of different hooks, whether it be a drywall hook, a, a New York roof hook. These are firemen's best tools. Heck yeah. Everybody comes off the rig, everybody should have a tool in their hand. So if all the other tools that are, are located on the front bumper or inside the cab are gone, this is another place you can come to get a tool. Right. This is our toolbox in here. Simple, just as it sounds. It's a tool bag. Right. Tool bag. And then we have a little bit of deodorizer. We have a little bit of uh, dry powder extinguisher. We have a, what we call a chimney kit. In the chimney kit is actually um, plastic baggies that we have filled up with dry, dry chemical powder. Okay. When you have a chimney fire, you drop those down the chimney. You cover the chimney. Right. And as the bags melt, the dry chemical agent releases and puts out the fire in the chimney. Pretty slick. I've seen other ones that also have the chain uh, uh, and hooks or brushes that they go down, and then they have a big pan that they normally carry also. Do you have that's, that on That's this? after the fire's out. Okay. That, that is in the... We have in the chimney kit, that is in here also. Okay. We, have, we have chains, yes. Okay. Long chains and a brush is in there, and basically you rattle the chains around inside. Yeah get all that dust and dirt and everything that ignited out of that chimney. Yes. Before we get back to our video, there have been hundreds if not thousands of requests over the years for us to do more training scenarios to have us meet the Fire One certification. We are now beginning a new mini segment in our station tours called The More You Know. In this segment, we enlist the help of our show's guests to teach us these skills. Let's begin our first segment of The More You Know. For more education, make sure to subscribe. Today we're going to be doing the skill sets for passing your Firefighter 1. Thank you to Lafayette Fire Company for running us through letter U of the skill set sheet. Alright, I'm Lieutenant Whistle. This is Firefighter Ops. We're going to be showing you guys how to do skill, safe, skill station U for the uh, Firefighter 1 practical exam. Uh, so pretty much it's just for, like focused on forcible entry. So it could be any type of door of the uh, the instructor's choosing usually it could be an inward swing or outward swinging door. This prop here is for an inward swinging door, uh, so we'll be demonstrating that process. Uh, there's an acronym we like to use, Firefighter Ops, going to talk about that and then we'll go from there. Short version is Gap Set Force. The long version is Shock Gap Set Force Control. First, you want to check the door for heat, and you also want to try it before you pry. So, this is an inward swinging door. It's inward swinging doors. You look at the hinges, the hinges will be on the inside. Outward swinging doors, the hinges will be on the outside. So you try before you pry, check the doorknob. All right, it's locked. So, shock the door. Gives you a little starting point. Gap the door. All right, you want to set? So, set the door, set the axe in there, or you can also use a wedge. Captures the progress so you don't lose the door, so it doesn't relock on you. So, you got the shot, you got the set, you got the shot, gap, set, so you force the door, and then you want to control the door, you want to control that flow path. So this was just an example of how to pass the check sheets of the Firefighter One practical exam. Uh, we're going to be doing a whole series of these, we're going to be going through all the check sheets, so pay attention, and we'll see you again next time. Basically, we have a uh, ABC extinguisher. We have two water cans. We have a torch in here. And both this unit, the squad, and the engine all have refrigerators. And uh, okay. in, in yep. water, water for hydrating <laughs> yeah. uh, on, the, on the incident I mean, scene. rehab is very important. You know, we get too often, we get busy doing things. We're working out. You know, we got all that bunker gear on, plus the heat of the fire and everything like that. We have to have kind of some rehab. And you know, relying on another company coming in, they be, they be coming in from another township, may not be there. Having water available is very important. And this is the same inlet that you would have to run the tower, right? Yes, we have an inlet on each side, five inch intake. Um, there is a valve, so I can't supply both sides because there's a clapper valve that will only allow you to supply from one side. Okay. This, Old fashioned Stokes basket up top. Well, that goes in conjunction with what you see here. Okay. The, the rick compartment. 
RIP. RIP meaning Rapid Intervention Team, correct? Rapid Intervention Team. So when we do get deployed for, for a RIT assignment, based all of our RIT equipment is on this side of the truck. So everything that we need, we have a, a portable air pack here. We have forcible entry tools in this bag. We have a rescue rope that is identified with reflective material. We have our Stokes basket harness. We have our Stokes basket. And then and that's the passport. passport. Dude. So all this goes together. When we are assigned the writ, you're grabbing the Stokes basket. You are loading these materials along with the saw into the Stokes basket and grabbing your fast board and going. Yeah, that definitely is the way to go. You ha you're gonna have all the pieces of tool because a writ is really designed for firefighter rescue. It's not necessarily designed to do that initial rescue of a residence. You can use them for those, but it's for, okay, we've been fighting the fire. Maybe someone went through the floor or roof collapsed and now we gotta go get our, our guys. That's what writ is designed for. Correct. Is that correct? Correct. We also have some other things in here. We have a water can, we have our elevator keys. We have some little extra tools in here that we use to gain access into buildings. Okay. This, this tool here is specifically a simple term. It's a bent piece of wire, but it's called a J hook. <laughs> okay. Okay. And basically you stick this through the crack of the door and you can turn it down and pull on that panic bar right. in order to get into a building without doing any damage. Yeah. So all little tricks like that we have in there. And then when, if we have to, this is the K tool. This Key tool basically you slide this down over the lock and you pull the whole lock out of the okay out of the door nice yeah those are the fun things those are the things that i've always liked to do is you know try to get into different places and and come up with those challenges of how to rescue people um yeah i like putting fires out too don't get me wrong but doing the rescue this is the truck that i would have want to ride on so, and that's pretty much about it. It brings us back to here, right? Brings us back to the opposite side of the crew cab. Okay. And then we have the officer seat. What's unique about the officer seat? Well, the officer seat, basically he has the iPad you can see there. So this is an officer's tool that he can grab. He has the radio. He is leading the operation. He is the OIC, the officer in charge. Okay. So he is in charge of this crew. So he's gonna get the initial dispatch. He kind of gets the updates and then he makes the assignments. You already have kind of pre-assigned, but he'll make sure that those things are squared away. Correct. Okay. Correct. All the crew is reporting to him. Okay. The, with the iPad, I mean, we can go responding on there. It, it's set up as a mobile, mobile data terminal. Okay. Uh, so we don't have to use the radio if there's a lot of chatter on there. Um, the iPad had also it, it maps out our location it tells us where we're going so when a call comes in it automatically loads with the location and maps out your route that's pretty slick dude this was absolutely amazing thank you for taking us around hopefully i can maybe get up top and get some film of of up top too if you don't mind sure um are we able to climb up there now yes we can we have a full time step here okay Okay, so we're gonna make our way up here. How tall is the truck as it's, it sits? The truck itself, I think it's 11 foot, 11 foot three, something like that. They, okay. it, it has it listed in the cab. I can check for you to okay. get exact. <laughs> but you don't but, have any problem getting under any bridges or anything like uh, we that? We do have one low bridge in our area that we do not take the ladder truck. Okay. The rest of our apparatus will fit, but not the ladder truck. Okay. And so, what do we got up here? Obviously, this is the bucket. Mm -hmm. So is this considered a quint since you, or because you don't have water? Uh, the quint actually has water and usually quints are single axle or, or less ground ladders. Um, a quint is like a, a do-it-all where it does have a pump and it has hose on it also. Okay. And there's no pump or hose on this truck. So this, this would be a, considered a ladder or a tower. Is yes, that this is a ladder tower, it is a true truck. Okay. Yes. Yeah, this is nice. So these are all the controls up here. We have the up, down, left, right, raise, lower. The nozzle is actually electro electric controlled with an electric motor, so we can control that from here, left, right, up, down. We have the lighting controls, this light right here for the basket. Okay. We have two lights on the back of the basket here with switches on the bottom and uh, I turn them on and off and then we have a compartment on each side in this compartment here this is uh, some roof rigging equipment for working on the roof this is uh, what we call a roof bag because if we go to the roof and we have an HVAC unit or something up there that's giving us trouble this has all of what I will call the favorite tools that you would need to work on something like that to get access and open up the compartments right. and stuff um, so a lot of times those are belts or fans that have gone bad that you yes. got to get basically get down and get access to, to make sure that everything is okay correct and then on the ladder itself we have some more hooks some more of the fireman's favorite tools. We have a 16 foot roof ladder, which uh, basically once we get up in the air, if we have to, 
go onto the roof. Uh, we will put that up over the peak. We will fold these hooks out. Uh, other than that, this, if we get to the roof, and let's say we're at a, uh, um, a commercial mall, and there's a, what they call a parapet. So you get the ladder truck up to the roof, and you get over the edge, and you find out that there's a 10 to 12 foot drop. Now we need to be able to get down to the roof level. So okay. we'll pull this ladder out. We basically put it over the edge here. This pin comes out and slides through the rung, and now we have to climb down to okay. the roof. That's pretty cool to have. I don't think I've ever seen that on a, a rig before. This this also, what, what we're looking at here, this is also called, this is a, a rescue device for the aerial. So the stoke basket actually fits right in here. Okay, and, and then you, you pin it and strap yes. it down. Yes. Yeah, that's slick. That's very slick. We run a straight tip nozzle. Okay. Straight tip nozzle on the end of the bucket, but there is a, a fog nozzle in here. And then also an ax, a sledge, and some uh, a marriage kit. Some things to do forcible entry with it if we're working on the roof. Okay. So when you get dispatched, you get to the scene, this, you said two guys get up in here and two guys kind of work the ground stuff, right? Yes. Do they then hoist it from here or do you have to hoist it from back there? Uh, you can, most guys will fly it from right here. Okay. Okay. From right here, yes. This is slick. Does it, it does it get kind of bouncy when you get up top, or is it pretty steady? It's pretty smooth. Okay. It is pretty smooth. Okay. I mean, if you're, you have to be qualified on it. So it's just like anything. I mean, as you're run, running the controls, I mean, if I'm using the controls and I would let go, it's going to swing. Yeah. Now, when you're up here, do you? wear your air packs or do you can you plug in do you have an air uh, supply? We, did, we chose not to get the air um, with the truck so we do wear our air packs okay it's pretty nice thank you for uh, taking us around Dave we really appreciate it it's an awesome little rig no problem thank you very much so once again this was Heroes Next Door with Lafayette Fire Company out of Pennsylvania before we end hit subscribe hit notification and keep smashing those like buttons see you again next week Lafayette nope do I want to say we're back we're still we're still at so let's go take a look and see what they talk. Almost there. These are the outtakes. You do my skill set number U. Lancaster. I'm from Michigan. You gotta give me a little break on that one. <laughs> Welcome to here.